everyone. Um, welcome to the webinar for Give Local Piedmont. We're just going to give um, everyone still joining just another minute or so, and then we'll get started with the presentation. Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started today. Um, welcome to um, the Give Local Piedmont training webinar. My name is Dawn um, and I'm with Mighty Cause. I'll be leading you through today's presentation. Um, I do have a few housekeeping items to note before we all jump in. Um, first, the webinar will be recorded. Um, and it'll be posted in the toolkit on the Give Local Piedmont site under the resources tab um, when it's finished. And then if you have questions anytime throughout the webinar, um, you can use the GoToWebinar chat module um, to send across those questions and we'll get to those um, after the webinar um, pending we have time. Uh, let's see, so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, Dee Dee is planning on joining us today. She's not on yet, um, but if she hops on later in the webinar, then um, She'll pass along any information uh, that she has for you guys. And then um, she'll also be able to answer any questions at the end that aren't like technical um, pertaining to Mighty Cause. So um, once Dee Dee hops on, then um, we'll get her on here too. But in the meantime, let's just go ahead and jump in. Um, we, Mighty Cause, are really excited to be the platform for Give Local Piedmont this year. We are really looking forward to providing the technical support to you as you gear up for um, the big day. So if you have any questions as you're getting everything ready, um, or if one of your supporters has a question, our support team is here to help you. Um, you can reach them at support at mightycause.com. Um, and this, that information will be at the end of the webinar too, so don't feel like you have to write it down now. Um, and just so you all are aware, it's a little bit of background. Mighty Cause is a fully functional nonprofit fundraising suite that organizations use 365 days a year to raise money for their causes. Um, we have been around since uh, 2006, and we're actually one of the first platforms to host giving days. So we've been doing this kind of event for a really long time, and we are super excited to host Give Local Piedmont. Um, so here's today's agenda. Um, we're going to be going over some of the basics. Then afterwards, we're going to walk through registering and navigating your nonprofit page on the platform. Um, and then after that, we'll go over the prizes available, uh, and then we'll move into giving event strategy. So like I previously said, we'll do a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Um, so any questions you have, again, just type them into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel, and um, we'll answer them all at the end. So uh, Give Local Piedmont this year is going to be on May 5th. Um, it's a 24-hour giving day that runs from midnight to midnight. Early giving this year starts on April 21st, 
And it's again organized by the Northern Piedmont Community Foundation. Um, the really awesome thing this year um, is that there's gonna be about $22,000 in prize money um, and lots and lots of opportunities to win. Um, and we'll go into the prizes available um, just a little bit later on. So a, for those of you that don't know, a Giving Day is a unique campaign presented by a host organization that allows um, nonprofits to compete with other nonprofits um, or against their own goal um, to win prize money. So Giving Days are a really exciting way for you to engage sponsors, community partners, peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraisers, and more to spread the word about your organization and your mission and to really raise funds for your cause. So the limited time frame that the Giving Day um, kind of sets creates a sense of urgency that donors tend to respond to. Um, and then the prizes that are available give you some fresh messaging opportunities throughout the day. And it looks like Dee Dee has joined. Hi, Dee Dee. Finally, I apologize. Apologize for being late. Ah! That's okay. That's okay. I just got through a couple of things, but um, you're welcome to uh, say a few words um, and then I'll just continue. Yeah, that's good. I don't want to break momentum at all. I just want to say thank you to all the participants in today's webinar. And as of today, anyway, we have no plans to delay, postpone, or cancel this fundraising day. Um, and we have uh, postcards and signs we'll be picking up this week, and we will reach out to everyone about how we will get them in your hands. And that's all, Dawn, by all means, take on. Yep, no, no worries. Um, so we're just going to talk through a few things about getting started, registering, et cetera, um, and then after that, we'll go into um, prizes and strategy. <clears throat> okay, so first things first, if you haven't done so yet, um, you're going to need to register your organization for Give Local Piedmont. Um, registration this year is a two-step process. Step one is going to the givelocalpiedmont.org site and filling out the registration form. Um, you'll need to either log into Mighty Cause or sign up for an account on Mighty Cause to view uh, that registration form. Um, once you complete the registration form online, you'll receive an email confirming that we've received it. And that email will also detail step two to, to officially complete the whole registration process. Um, you'll, you'll be able to add administrators to your organization's account on Mighty Cause as well um, once you complete step one so multiple people can access um, and help run your campaign. And then step two, is filling out your organization's to-do list, which can be found under the overview section, which we'll talk about a little more in detail in a second. Um, so the to-do list is located under the overview section in your nonprofit dashboard. Um, and we have preemptively imported information from your profiles on the previous platform. Um, so any nonprofits that participated in Give Local Piedmont in the past should only have about one or two tasks to do before your registration is completely done. Um, and then once, you're, once you complete registration by finishing both steps, um, then you'll receive an email confirming that you're totally approved and you're all set. And then of course, if you have any questions during that process, um, let, you know, let Didi know, let our ser customer service team know, their email again is support at mightycost.com. So um, once you've filled out and submitted the registration form online for step one, um, you'll need to complete the items on your to-do list, like I mentioned. Um, again, this list is located in the overview section on your nonprofit profile. Um, it's located under the metrics that are listed there. So you'll see in the little um, GIF that's on here, you'll see the overview is listed first on that dashboard. So once you sign in, you'll be able to see the dashboard profile. Uh, and then the overview section will have that blue to-do list right on that page. So um, there's gonna be four basic items to complete. Um, you need to add a background image to your page. Um, you can you know, upload your own, you can use um, our gallery of stock background images that we have. Um, you'll need to upload your logo. Um, that's what will represent you throughout Give Local Piedmont. You'll need to add a story. 
um, that you know tells visitors to your profile about what your nonprofit organization does. Um, and you'll need to build a thank you page that donors will see once their donation transaction is completed. So if you click the links in the to-do list, you'll be taken right to the spots on your profile where you can complete each task. Um, so it, it should be pretty easy to complete each of the items um, on the list. Uh, but you know, if you do need help or you're unsure, um, just let us know um, at support at mightycause.com um, or check out our support library. We have lots of walkthroughs and videos that can help you out as well. Um, we also recommend taking some time to get to know your dashboard. Uh, your dashboard is the admin section um, that you see here that appears on the left side of the screen when you're logged in and on your nonprofit's um, profile. So when you log in, you'll automatically land on that overview section of your welcome screen, um, which is where you'll find that to-do list, uh, as well as the metrics for your nonprofit. Um, and then under fundraising, uh, that'll allow you to customize your organization page by toggling on edit mode uh, and include um, you know, metrics like adding a goal for the giving day. Um, you can, uh, that'll allow you to enable a progress bar on your page. Um, within that fundraising section on your dashboard, you'll also find the checkout flow, uh, which we're going to talk about in a few slides, as well as matching grants, um, which we're going to go into detail about later on. And then below that on your dashboard is the report section, where you're able to preview and export different types of donation reports. Um, and then you can also manage your nonprofit settings like URL customization, and admin control um, from that settings section at the bottom. So um, your profile is gonna be the face of your nonprofit for Give Local Piedmont. So you really wanna make sure it looks good and represents you as an organization well. And then just so you know, your profile link is the link that you'll share with your supporters to ask them to donate um, to your Give Local Piedmont page. Um, so to share your page, just copy and paste um, the URL into an email or social post or wherever you're advertising the campaign. Um, which again, if you have any trouble with that or any questions, then just let our support team know um, and they'll be happy to send you your <laughs> URL um, if there's any question about it. Um, so as you're going through your to-do list, um, you'll want to customize your profile to match your brand. Um, so um, you can change your theme color to match your logo. Um, you can upload media to your gallery to add um, to you know the visual interest on your page. Um, your story or description uh, is really the centerpiece of your page, so you're one of you're one are going to spend um, a, a little bit more time on that. Um, so in your story, you can put your mission statement. You can add photos and video, um, and then just as a note, you'll need to upload the video um, to YouTube or Vimeo first, and then that way you can embed it in your story so people can watch it right there on your profile. So the story section is really where you can go in depth about your work and really make that strong appeal to donors. Um, you know, tell them why your organization needs their support, um, especially in you know everything we're going through right now. It's more important than ever to let them know what you're doing um, and just showing the impact of your work. Uh, so really spend some time customizing this profile because the more work you put into it, the chances are the better you'll do during Give Local Piedmont because donors will see. Um, that you have put effort into this and respond to that themselves. Um, you know, you can have the best campaign strategy in the world, but you know, if your profile, the page where people actually go to make donations, looks like you haven't shown it any love, then that could be, uh, you know, concerning for them. So one of the really awesome things about Mighty Cause is that your nonprofit has quite a bit of control over the donation process. Uh, which is definitely unique among fundraising platforms. So from our checkout flow tool, you can opt into collecting the information you want from donors, like addresses and phone numbers. Um, you can also set up custom suggested donation amounts, and you can add descriptions to help tie those amounts to items or services that your nonprofit provides, um, which really helps strengthen your appeal um, to your donors. So the checkout flow also allows you to preview the whole checkout process without actually making a test donation. So you can see what your final process looks like and use that to edit yourself if needed. Um, the checkout flow is also where you'll go to set up your thank you donation confirmation page, um, which uses the same text editor as your story on your profile. 
Um, so you can add text, you can add links, a video, or an image. Um, you can also add a custom call to action button uh, that tells donors where you'd like them to go next. So a cool idea would be uh, you know, asking them to sign up for your email list right on that confirmation um, page that they receive after their donations complete. There's really a lot you can do in the checkout flow tool to optimize your campaign and customize that process for your donors. Okay, so now we're gonna move into talking about the awesome prizes that the Give Local Piedmont event has to offer and then how you can aim to win them. Okay, so Give Local Piedmont um, this year is offering grand prize grants to the top two places for both large and small organizations on the leaderboard. Um, this is, is gonna give a lot of nonprofits a chance to win. Um, the leaderboards will be on the live event site. So if you go to the site now, you're not gonna see them. Um, but as soon as the giving day begins, participating organizations will be able to see exactly where they stand on those leaderboards. Um, so it's important that I mention that only online donations made through the Mighty Cost platform will count towards leaderboard totals. Um, Northern um, Piedmont Community Foundation is accepting checks for participating organizations, but check donations will not count towards leaderboard prizes. Um, just FYI. Um, so this is really a big reason why you wanna push your donors to give online so you can make sure that you're competitive with those prizes. Uh, and then the leaderboard is going to reflect your cumulative total from the time early giving begins on April 21st to the end of the giving day on May 5th. So it's basically a running total of everything you've raised online uh, between that time frame. Um, and here, you know, you're engaging uh, in some friendly competition for those top prizes. So um, as you can see, uh, so small organization, um, first and second place, large organization, first and second place uh, gets uh, $1,500 and then $1,000 for second. There's lots of additional prizes. We've got the 50-50 early bird challenge. Um, we've, they have three different power hours throughout the day. There's gonna be a bunch of different golden tickets. There's a grow the grassroots prize, notable newcomer, et cetera. Um, there were so many prizes, I couldn't list them on this prize slide. So um, I highly encourage everyone to go to the rules and prizes tab on givelocalpiedmont.org to see a complete list and description of all of the prizes and then um, all of the rules associated as well. Um, so if you have any questions after visiting the prizes slot, um, tab on givelocalpiedmont.org, um, just let us know uh, and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have about the prizes. But there are lots and lots of opportunities to win. So definitely, uh, you know, start planning now on how your organization is going to work to win them. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just get all your ducks in a row so that you can win, um, you know, exactly the ones that you want to win. So it's very exciting. Okay, so now we're gonna jump in and talk through ways that you can strategize to win um, some of the many prizes that are available for this year's Give Local Piedmont. Um, so first things first, you have access to a lot of really great tools that you can use um, as you get ready for Give Local Piedmont, um, and they can all be found in the nonprofit toolkit. Uh, the toolkit has tips and tricks, it's got an FAQ, um, it's got walkthroughs, it's, it, you know, it also has templates that you can use for email and social media to help you get inspired and, you know, figure out how to promote your campaign. Um, the toolkit is also where you'll be able to find today's training recording, as well as logos and graphics that you can download to start tying your brand into the Give Local Piedmont brand. So definitely check out the toolkit if you haven't already and refer back to it as many times as possible um, as you're planning your campaign. Um, since Give Local Piedmont is a 24-hour campaign, uh, the trick to making the most of the event is to really sustain your fundraising momentum. Uh, one great way to do that uh, and make sure your campaign is on track is to set mini goals for your nonprofit to help generate buzz and build excitement. So you'll want to think of your overall fundraising goal and what you'll need to raise each part of the day. So, you know, you could say morning, afternoon, or evening, um, or if you wanted to get even more granular, you could, you know, set a goal for each hour of the day. 
um, to help make sure that you're on track to reach your overall goal. The, the really great thing about Give Local Piedmont is, again, there's so many prizes available that you can win. Um, so you can really utilize uh, these mini goals to help sustain those fun that fundraising momentum and get people excited about helping win uh, you know, the different prizes. So something else that you can do to get your campaign rolling um, is ask for uh, seed donations. These donations uh, from people are for people in your nonprofit's inner circle that essentially break the ice with donors and help get the ball rolling. So people that ask for a seed donation would be um, your board, uh, staff, volunteers, or really anyone else at your nonprofit who's highly engaged in your work. Um, you know, these don't have to be huge donations, but getting a little bit in the bank by, you know, tapping the people in your inner circle really does help your campaign move forward and get donations coming in. And, you know, if you're a really small organization and you don't have a board and you don't have staff and it's really just a couple volunteers, um, get your immediate friends and family to, to make those initial um, seed donations of, you know, $10. And that way you have something on your page as soon as the campaign starts. Um, and that way you can go out and, you know, that ice has already been broken for uh, other people that you reach out to through social media or, um, you know, an email chain or whatever you end up doing for your uh, marketing. Uh, another great strategy for driving donations during a giving event is uh, securing a matching grant. So a matching grant is essentially a larger donation that your nonprofit leverages to bring in other smaller donations by offering it up as a match. Um, so for instance, if you had someone willing to give you $1,000, um, instead of just putting that money in the bank and calling it a day, um, you could use it as a matching grant. So you'd take that $1,000 and say to your supporters, um, okay, between this day and this day, um, or in this instance, you know, between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. donations are going to be matched up to $1,000, um, which basically allows your donors to double their donation. So you can do a lot within the Mighty Cause matching grant tool. I mean, you have a lot of options for how to structure your match. So not all matches have to be one-to-one -one matching. So, you know, if someone gives that amount, then that exact amount isn't matched. Um, you could do two to one matching, um, three to one matching. Um, you can even match a percentage of each donation, um, or you could match a certain number of donations. Um, especially that would come in handy since um, the prizes for Give Local Piedmont are based on those unique donors. Um, making sure that you match a certain number of donations will help you um, in your prize strategy as you're working. Um, so, in that case, for instance, you know, for um one of the prizes available uh uh that you want to win you could say that if you get 100 donations um within an hour or you know 20 donations within an hour then you'll get an additional a thousand dollars for your nonprofit um to help you actually drive donation volume and traffic so you know that could really be a useful strategy for one of the power hours um you could get uh secure a matching grant of you know whatever amount you're able to get and then um make sure that you set it so uh, once a certain number of donations has reached that you determine is good, so maybe 30 donations in an hour, on um, whatever you're able to do, then it kind of unlocks that, that grant that you've received. Um, you can also post multiple grants at the same time um, and also do them in sequence. So you can set a bunch of grants to fire one after the other. So if you get um, a really large, um, donation that you, you really want to take advantage of and win one of the power hours, um, then you can, you know, say during, you know, the first 30 donations unlocks this um, match of $500. And then the second set of uh, 30 donations uh, unlocks the second grant of $500. So if we get 60 donations in an hour, then we'll unlock $1,000. So you can set that kind of stuff up within the matching grant tool in your Mighty Cause account. Um, so since a matching grant is ultimately just a large donation, um, you really want to follow the same process as you would when securing major gifts. So basically prospect, cultivate, and ask. Um, people who you should consider as prospects for a matching grant are board members, um, current major gift donors, um, you know, who've given large donations to your nonprofit in the past. 
Um, corporate sponsors are also good prospects because it's a fun, proactive way for them to get involved um, you know, in a public way and draw attention to their philanthropy. So in the coming weeks, you can make your asks and shore up the details of the match. Um, and again, again, you can have more than one match running at the same time on Mighty Cause. So if you get a lot of great responses, don't feel like you have to pick and choose one. You can use them all if you want. Um, and then just as a reminder, the matching grant tool is located um, on your Mighty Cause dashboard um, under that fundraising section. So moving on from matching grants, um, I do want to talk a little bit about ambassadors. Uh, ambassadors are people who usually are in your nonprofit's inner circle um, who can uh, boost your campaign. So, you know, that includes board members, volunteers, especially ones, you know, who are highly engaged, staff members, and so on. Utilizing am ambassadors can help you break out of your uh, list of existing supporters and engage new people. Um, you know, people you wouldn't otherwise have access to, which can be extremely beneficial in, you know, the kind of day that Give Local Piedmont is, where unique donors are everything. So, you know, an ambassador can help you in a few different ways. They can simply share a link to your page uh, with their social circle to ask them to donate, or they can set up a fundraising page to help solicit, solicit donations directly for your organization. Um, if you have a board member, for instance, who's very well connected, this can be a huge boost. Um, they can help by getting involved uh, in your campaign by doing peer-to-peer -peer fundraising as an ambassador. So um, the Mighty Cause platform is actually set up for really easy peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So this can be a great way to shake up your campaign and acquire those new donors. Um, so if you wanted to try peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, basically you would ask ambassadors to set up a fundraising page for your nonprofit on Mighty Cause for Give Local Piedmont. Um, and then, you know, this may sound like a big ask, but it's often a really fun way to engage your biggest supporters um, and allow them to tell their own story about your nonprofit, you know, how they came to work for you and why your work is so important to them. And this doesn't distract or draw attention away from your campaign because they're operating alongside your campaign. Um, they're reaching out to people they know personally for donations. Um, in most cases, their friends and colleagues and family, they're not going to be people your nonprofit would normally have access to to solicit for donations. And so you're actually picking up new donors through peer-to-peer -peer most of the time. Um, you know, so for people like your board, volunteers, staff, um, program alumni, this can be a really great way for them to get involved without, you know, just being asked to give money. Um, it can make it, you know, be much more meaning, meaningful for them than just making that donation or sharing the link. Um, so it really can be a part of your stewarding process, you know, of building and sustaining a relationship with that particular supporter. Um, we've, you know, we've seen nonprofits get some really great peer-to-peer -peer action going by just inviting people on social media or, you know, sending them an email directly asking them for their help. Um, especially for younger people who have a big social network and are really comfortable online, um, you know, but maybe they don't have a lot of cash to give, this can be an excellent way for them to help out and make a meaningful contribution towards your nonprofit. Um, and then, of course, to help make things easier for your non uh, excuse me, um, for your ambassadors, um, you can share images, talking points, logos with them, or you know, even offer to help them set up your page. Um, we do have the ability for you to create fundraising templates within um, your account, so you can you know basically set up pages for them, and then it's really easy for them to create and kind of customize as they need. Um, so, you know, nonprofits that utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising do tend to raise more money. Um, so it's definitely worth talking about how you can incorporate into your campaign strategy for this year's uh, Give Local Piedmont. Um, your email list is going to be one of your most important tools during Give Local Piedmont because emails are a direct line to your supporters. Um, unlike social media, you don't have to worry about an algorithm getting in your way or preventing people from seeing what you send them, because unless they've unsubscribed, it's going to end right up in their inbox, and it's probably going to send them a notification on their phones. Um, so I want to talk for a little bit about email strategy, because that's going to be really important during this campaign. So in general, you'll want to keep your emails relatively short, simple, and skimmable. Um, people are much more likely to read emails that pertain directly to them. So we highly recommend segmenting your email list by sorting donors into a few key groups. Um, donors who have given a lot or give on a regular basis, one-time donors, uh, people who have utilized your services but never donated, 
your board, volunteers, and so on. Um, you don't need to craft entirely new emails to each of these groups, but you can tweak small things about the emails for each group to make it more personal. So first things first, identify your key segments and then figure out how to tailor your message to them. So when an email is tailored uh, to who the recipient is and you know the relationship that they have with your organization, they are much more likely to read it and take action on it. Uh, and then one thing you'll need to pay, pay close attention to is the timing of your emails, especially if you're aiming to win something like a power hour. Um, I would recommend taking the time to write and schedule as much as you can um, beforehand. And then of course, have a template email ready for things that you need to send out on the day of, um, you know, like an email blast, um, asking people to help you get to your campaign goal or an announcement that you won, um, you know, potentially won a power hour. Um, so as I mentioned before, most people read their email on their phones these days. So make sure that you choose a mobile friendly email template and then test it out beforehand um, with you know, other people that are working on the campaign with you or you know, specific volunteers um, or staff members that you've asked uh, for help. Um, and then lastly, your, your call to actions within your emails should be clear and action oriented. Um, you wanna you know, give now, donate now, help us today. More passive call to actions like you know, thanks for donating or please contribute aren't as effective. So you'll wanna be crystal clear and urgent when you email them, especially since the campaign is only lasting for 24 hours and the prizes are only available for that long. Um, you'll wanna make sure that everything you're asking um, them to do is very clear and never forget to send your link for Give Local Piedmont in your email. Um, you wanna make sure that they know exactly where to go and what to do when you uh, send that ask over to them. Um, so for a high stakes campaign like Give Local Piedmont, um, we really recommend staying in your comfort zone, um, you know, going where your audience is in terms of social media. Um, so, you know, what I mean by that is if you have a thousand followers on your Facebook page, but only a handful on Instagram, um, you know, you should spend way more time and effort on promoting your campaign on Facebook than Instagram. Um, you know, put your efforts into the platform where you're most likely to reach people and have an impact. And I definitely recommend scheduling any social posts you can ahead of time just to save yourself a lot of trouble during the campaign, you know, and leading up to it. Get your key content scheduled, um, you know, Facebook's publishing tools or Creator Studio. Um, go into TweetDeck and schedule your tweets. Um, save any live posting for stuff that needs to be done, like thanking a donor, um, updates on your progress, um, potential prize announcements, et cetera, um, for, for the day of. And then to that end, you'll, you know, if you have the capacity, um, you'll want to try and assign a point person to monitor social media so you can quickly respond to any comments um, and interactions with your followers. Since, you know, that's really important on social media, an interaction can help you in terms of the uh, newsfeed algorithm. Um, since, you know, most platforms do show priority to posts with lots of engagement. Um, another great way to enhance engagement is um, to consider doing um, a Facebook Live post or an Instagram Live post um, while you're, uh, you know, in the middle of your day, um, especially since, you know, the, the chances of us having in-person events are very low at this point. Um, doing some sort of Facebook Live where you get everyone together and can, you know, kind of uh, pump up the volume with um, how your campaign's going, um, what you're doing, you know, what your, uh, you know, your staff is doing during the day to to really spread the word. Um, you know, if you're, uh, you know, if you have some sort of um, like building that you're still able to access or go into, um, you know, giving people a tour around the building, um, kind of showing them what you do, showing them um, the, uh, you know, programs that you have, uh, like, for instance, if you're an animal shelter, um, that's a great way to, uh, you know, kind of bring people around the shelter, show them the animals, um, tell them like what the day to day looks like for a volunteer. Um, just try and get really creative about it because, you know, these these live not in person, um, you know, ways that we have available to us now would be a great way for you to engage your audiences. And then those are, um, like I said, definitely more, uh, the algorithm uh, prefers those um, if you're able to get people engaging, um, liking, commenting, et cetera, on your um, live like streaming that you're able to do. Um, 
So I even if you've never done it before, I highly recommend, you know, practice in advance. Um, and that is a great, uh, you know, way for you to get extra engagement, um, especially since um, you might be a little bit more limited um, with in-person stuff uh, throughout the day. Um, and then sometimes it is helpful to budget a little money. Um, if you're able to boost, you know, some posts or promote some tweets, um, on social media, $3 for an ad can actually go a really long way. Um, you'll you'll want to make sure your ad is targeted properly. Um, and if you aren't sure how to target an ad, you can always default to targeting the people who like your page or already follow you. Um, in terms of the type of content, again, that'll do well on social media. It depends a little bit on the platform. But in general, um, like I said, the, the live streaming does really well. Uh, and then photos and videos do really well as well. So, you know, if you're a little gun shy on the streaming, totally understand. Um, but any, like as many pictures that you're able to post um, throughout the day um, or videos, uh, then that'll do really well as, as well. Um, and, you know, that'll help deliver um, or generate some buzz uh, within your social media feeds to help with that algorithm um, to get pe more people seeing it. And then, of course, encouraging people to share, 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 um, since uh, they're you know, already on watching you, um, let them know that sharing helps too. Um, obviously donations are better, but um, the more that they can do to help, the better. Uh, and then um, finally, uh, when you're planning your campaign, follow-up is also really important to consider. Um, when you're planning your content, you'll also wanna plan um, your thank you to donors, so, you know, things like making a video or a photo of your staff can be really great for this. So be sure to talk about the impact of the funds you raised um, and close the loop on your campaigns. Uh, um, so, you know, that means if you were fundraising for something specific, like, you know, a new piece of equipment or improvements to your building or something like that, you'll, you'll also want to send emails periodically on your progress to, to close that loop for people. Um, and then you'll want to make sure you've got an onboarding plan in place for new donors as well. Um, so when they come back to donate again, um, you know, if you collect addresses, mailing them a welcome packet can be a great way to get them onboarded. Um, an email journey is a great way to get them onboarded. Um, uh, you know, sending them a newsletter is a great way. There's basically, um, you know, anywhere you can get them more information about what you do and why it's important to support your work, that will help steward them along. So um, the follow-up for Give Local Piedmont, um, especially since, you know, it is such a community um, event, that follow-up for you in particular as a nonprofit is really important. So donors know, um, you know, what you're doing and, and how they're helping you. So um, as we wrap this up, I want to make sure our support team's contact information is here for you to reference. Um, they are a really, really great resource before and during the giving day um, for anything campaign related. Um, so, you know, if you need help getting your page set up, if you need help um, figuring out how to strategize around the prizes, um, you know, if, you're, if your donors need anything, you can reach out to them at any time. Um, their email is support at mightycause.com. Um, they will be available um, 24 hours uh, during your during the Give Local Piedmont giving event. Normally, their hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, but they will be on um, for the entirety of Give Local Piedmont if, you know, you have a question during the day um, or just need help in general. Um, and their, their phone number is listed there as well. Okay, so I, let's see what questions um, came in during the webinar. Oh my goodness, no questions. That is amazing. Either I'm really good or I'm the only one here, which I don't think is the case. Um, but great, I'm so, I'm so glad there's no questions. Um, Dee Dee, do you, um, do you have any? It was extremely informative, I, I really, I mean, Good. I I'm don't. So I just want to make sure that uh, the yeah, just want to make sure the folks out there truly, truly don't. Now's the time. <laughs> I know. Um, because that was a lot of ground to cover. I know it really is. Um, luckily, again, this will be. It, this is recorded. Um, it's being recorded right now. So I know that I presented a ton of information. 
for everyone. I hope I didn't talk too quickly. Sometimes when I get excited, <laughs> I can talk a little fast. So hopefully um, everything is fine, but you know, you can always, um, I'll have this posted on the toolkit by tomorrow. So, you know, if you get bored as you're social distancing, you're welcome to watch it again and again. It'll, you know, and that'll set you up great, I'm sure. Um, let's see. So, um, Stacy, I see your question. Um, and since that's more like less forgive local PMAT specific, um, I will go ahead and email you instructions on how to update your address for your organization. Um, so I'll email you after this, um, but uh, that is it. Um, I I guess I really appreciate everyone's time today. Dee Dee, do you have anything else for everyone? I do not. Okay. Um, I do not. I just take advantage of the website is all I would say, that there is a lot of information on the website, on the givelocalpiedmont.org website. There is, yes. Um, there's FAQs specific for donors, FAQs specific for nonprofits. The toolkit, like I mentioned, has a ton of stuff in it. We're, um, I still have things to add to it too, so keep checking in on it um, as it gets closer to the event. Um, this webinar recording will be there. Um, and then I'll probably, um, our Mighty Cause is doing um, a webinar next week for specifically about um, tips on digitizing your events since we know a lot of organizations um, won't be having in-person events for these like the spring giving season um, so once that's recorded I'll post that in um, the toolkit here as well um, just because I that'll be really good um, source of information so the toolkit definitely access at any time um, it'll just have a lot of great tools. And then of course, if you have any questions as you're going through your um, nonprofit account, setting things up, um, you know, contemplating matching grants, our support team is very knowledgeable and really happy to help. Um, and if you didn't write it down, definitely write their email down. Um, it's support at mightycause.com um, and they are happy to help with anything. So, um, Okay, yeah, that's it. So I um, I guess we'll end a little early today and I, I really, really appreciate everyone's time. I know it's kind of crazy out there. So I hope everyone's um, responsibly social distancing and you know, coming up with creative new ways of greeting people. And uh, yeah, so we're really excited to you know be the platform for Give Local Piedmont this year. And um, I've, we just, we're really excited to host you guys and uh, I wish everyone the best of luck. Okay, thanks again. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Don. Yep, thanks, Dee Dee.